Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Dainese Tonal D-Dry textile jacket. The Tonal D-Dry is Dainese's textile touring jacket that has its highest spec before you start getting into Dainese's Gore-Tex range. It uses Dainese's own D-Dry waterproof membrane, but this is D-Dry XT, which means it's both laminated to the main shell for better rain protection, and it also has four-way stretch for flexibility. It's 5p shy of 500 quid as we record this video, which is getting up there into Gore-Tex money, but the spec of this jacket makes it worthy of consideration in my opinion. So let's go into the details about it. That outer is D-Dry XT or Extend, and it's a nylon type fabric with the waterproof membrane directly bonded to it. That means more immediate protection against rain than if you have a separate waterproof membrane sat loosely behind the outer. So the jacket stays drier in the first instance as that waterproofing gets into the mix right from the off rather than waiting for the outer shell to saturate first. This material is rated to what's known as a 20,000 millimeter static head, which means the material will resist a 20 meter column of water and that's above the average performance for bike clothing. There are other benefits to the lamination too, mostly that ventilation is more direct, but I'll get into that in a little bit more detail soon. The D-Dry XT material gets a helping hand in some areas in terms of protection with Dainese's D-Stone fabric. That's a high tenacity nylon that delivers beefier abrasion protection, and you'll find that at the elbows. There is some light reflective material on this jacket if those sort of things are important to you. This dotted section here at the sleeves, and then there's another section on the back of the shoulders. They light up in a car's headlight to help make you more visible. The vents for this jacket are on the chest, and there's also a couple on the back. When they open up, the main shell takes the membrane with it, so you can get much better airflow through to the inside of the jacket. There are two layers of mesh in here, and also one thin layer of lining material. So there is a small interruption to airflow, but it's nothing like you'd get if there was actually a waterproof membrane behind there as well. Something else to bear in mind with a laminated jacket like this, if air can get through this open vent, then water can too. You'll need to keep those vents shut when it rains, just saying. There's fit adjustment on the jacket too. It's at the arms and the torso. The poppers above and below the elbows keep the sleeves snug when the inner liner comes out. And then there's a waist belt here that pulls it tight in around the body. There's also a drawstring tensioner at the lower hem, which helps keep a good seal around the base to avoid drafts and keep rainwater out as well. The main fastener on this jacket is a zip, and then behind it, there's a storm flap to block out any rain that gets past those teeth of the zip. Most storm flaps on jackets either zip together or just sit loose behind the main zip, but this one has a series of poppers, just like this here, to connect it. It's a bit more long-winded to do up those poppers than on normal jackets, but if the weather's okay, you can just do up the outer zip and get on with it. You only really need that storm flap done up when it's properly raining. The neck fastening is straightforward Velcro, and then there's a popper to hold it out of the way if you don't want any restriction against the neck. It just poppers against this one here. The cuffs do up with zips and Velcro, and I found there was loads of room to fit even chunky winter gloves underneath here. That's how I think most people would use this jacket with their gloves on the inside, but if you're the sort of rider who prefers your gloves over the top, I think it might be a bit of a struggle as it's difficult to get this cuff done up tightly enough to get it on the inside of the gloves. Last thing on the outside, pockets. There are two on the front. They do up with Velcro flaps that fold over to protect the zip underneath. This pocket, the one on the rider's right, is rated as waterproof. There's a little label here that tells you, but the other one isn't. There's also a lower back cargo pocket, and that one isn't waterproof either. So let's move to the interior. This jacket comes with a removable thermal liner, which has full sleeves and secures into the main jacket with zips and poppered straps that hold it in place at the cuffs. It's what Dainese call a destination layer, which means you can take it out of the jacket when you get to where you're going and you have a lightweight jacket that you can wear while you're off the bike. The one in this jacket looks smart enough to actually do that. And it's a handy thing to have if you're touring as it means you don't have to pack something like that in your luggage. You can just use the one from the jacket rather than having to carry it with you all the time. There are two pockets in that thermal liner and they're the only dedicated interior pockets for this jacket. There are two pockets on the inside of the main shell, but they're designed to hold Dainese's chest impact protectors, which are available as optional extras. If you're not keeping armor in there, then they actually become handy pockets for stuff like your phone, which is what I used them for. The pockets were big enough for my phone. And as they're on the inside of the jacket, there's a handy benefit that they actually keep things dry as they're behind that waterproof membrane. 
The armour in this jacket is really old school Dainese armour that's made from foam and a hard shell over the top and it meets the basic level one of the CE standard. It's at the elbows and the shoulders and there's a pocket for an optional back protector as well as a pocket for those chest protector inserts that I just mentioned. In terms of overall protection from this jacket, the Tonal D-Dry reaches the basic level A within the recent CE standard for protection. The last bit to know about the inside of this jacket, there's a long connection zip to attach it to a pair of Dainese trousers. If you want a matching set, the Tonal D-Dry trousers are available for £379.95 and have a similar construction with the laminated membrane and removable thermal liner. So that makes for an £880 combination of jacket and trousers. I spent a reasonable amount of time wearing this jacket in both warm and cold weather and I found it effective in both thanks to the venting and that warm thermal liner. It kept me dry when it rained and it kept me warm when it was chilly, although I did wear a thermal fleece underneath when the temperature went down to around 9 degrees. Once I got down into single figures I would think most riders would probably want to do the same. When choosing a size for this jacket, bear in mind that this shell is made from a stretch material. It's actually quite forgiving if you wear it tight. So you could consider going a size lower than normal and still getting a good comfortable fit. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Dainese Tonal D-Dry jacket. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.